What's up, everybody? Michael Silva here. You're watching the Stock Market Brief Show. Today's date is March 7th, 2022. It is Monday. Yes, and what a wild start to the trading week indeed. And now what we're going to be talking about is that there may be actually more some potential upside in the markets in the short term than there is downside in the short term. And I'll talk about my thought process there. Still a lot of risk in the systems. We need to be very careful as we always talk. Let's go ahead and get into today's episode. All right, everybody, welcome back. This is a tweet from Michael Guyad earlier. So the Fed is about to raise rates with the economy slowing down, with war, with credit spreads widening. Good luck with that. The reason why I'm showing this is I re recently reached out to Michael Guyad to bring him back onto the, the show to talk about what is taking place in the markets and get some thoughts. So be on the lookout for that. We're going to try to schedule it for this weekend coming up. Now we have on March 10th, Boom, boom, boom. Coming up, we have CPI data. So that will throw things around. Be very careful in the bond market. As you can see here is the market dashboard. What took place? Well, the top four up there, we have consumer staples, healthcare, energy. We got real estate, um, one down below. Now, we only had two in the green, but notice how these are more defensive posturing. We've been talking about safety trades. Now, consumer staples was down 1.82%. So that was a big hit in consumer staples. But if you take a look at the S&P 500, it was down almost 3%. So on a relative basis, what a lot of people get this confused is they'll say, well, all these can go down when the market go down. Yes, absolutely. From a relative basis, where would you rather have money, right? You'd probably want some energy. You'd probably want some utilities. You'd probably want to be within this area versus being exposed to, say, consumer discretionary or technologies. Those are some big laggards. And when you take these two big sectors and then you add financials on top of that, this is what creates big down days. That's a big, big move for the S&P 500 to the downside, down almost 3%. The NASDAQ deposit was almost down 4% large moves to the downside. If you take a look at the safety trade kind of relative strength chart that I have here, you have a look at gold, utilities, consumer staples, bonds, defensive, uh, it's a defensive ETF and XLV, which is healthcare. Boom, 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 boom. They're all firing off like crazy, right? So from a relative standpoint, safety continues to be the trade here as well as obviously energy. Now, I want to bring Michael Guy to talk about the indicators that are flipping here. This one has just shot off. As you can see, utilities had a great day, but this is part of his beta rotation strategy. This is one of the indicators that he looks at. And, you know, this, when it closes above the week, above zero, that is a quote unquote risk off indicator. But he likes to match this with other technical indicators. And when you look at the lumber to gold ratio, Look at that thing coming down. Now, you know, it's day one of this week. So this can change. It can move right back up. But that is a very strong move. We're not below zero or still above it at this particular time. But as he previously stated in that tweet, there are a lot of things kind of turning the waters here, letting us know that risk off can be very soon. And to be quite honest, looking at all these indices year to date performance, it feels like it has been a risk off environment. Um, and given obviously geopolitical risks that keep on building. The dollar fired off today, once again, just continuing to rally higher, bringing the market down. So these big, strong moves at a rapid rate of change, you know, the equity markets do not like that. And you can see it did sell off continually. Now, what's interesting here is even though that the dollar is rising, we have gold firing off, hitting above $2,000 for the first time in quite some time. So we haven't seen that since 2020, um, you know, mid to, yeah, where, where, where were we? So we're, yeah. July, August, yeah, mid-2020. So it's been a while since we've been there and it continues to just rip higher. Oil, this is insane. This is completely bonkers. We hit a high today of 130.5. Now, it's not the greatest looking. We obviously came off quite a bit, put in a shooting star type candle. Maybe this is that parabolic run, but you know, this thing has not calmed down and the tensions haven't calmed down. So it's, it's, it's a very difficult... Very difficult, like because when people see this, they might be like, "I'm gonna just, I'm gonna short it, or I'm gonna go long right here." Uh, you know, I'd be very careful with all of that. We're seeing large range candles, which means a lot of volatility. It's completely vertical right now. The setup, it's just not quite there yet. So we need to wait to see things settle down and see if things get set back up. As it stands right now, we are very extended in the price of oil, and with this rapid move in the price of oil. You know, this could very well lend its hand to why the transportation industry had just a monster hit to the downside, down 4.20%. Look at the range of candle that had with the, some volume to support the move. Now it's relatively in this 
tr long trading range. But you know, if you want the markets to be doing well and um, you know not continually sell off, you want transportation because it's a big driver in the economy to be performing. And right now we're just range bound, but you can see a, clearly just a big hit today. And if you take a look at airlines, so for example, we'll pull up Jets, the ETF completely hammered, right? So down 11.14%. Now, these are some capitulation type candles to an extent and some volume to support the move. This could be just a strong move to the downside. It doesn't mean that it's going to recover and call away, come back up here. But I would expect to see some bounces here um, within, you know, these large moves to the downside, these daily moves, especially looking at how oil played out today. So oil was this large move to the upside that could contribute very well to why airlines got just completely smash. So if oil starts to back off, this could be an opportunity, maybe not to reclaim all-time highs and start ripping up higher, but there could be some opportunities to buy some bounces or fade um, from, uh, you know, fade the shorts. So if they're con consistently holding shorts, where are they going to cover, right? So you got to think about that. Well, right here is an area of support, right here was an area of support, and right here was a gap fill. So in this zone right in here could very well be a bounce zone where it can come up a couple dollars, right? So if we come into 16 and goes up a couple dollars right there, that's a pretty nice move um, in this ETF. If you take a look at semiconductors, very similar situation, some strong volume, and we just had a new yearly um, a low here put in in semiconductors. So just being these big sectors have been getting just hit hard. If you take a look over at the heat map, this is getting interesting. Oh my gosh, all red except for what energy and utilities. Go figure, right? Nothing new there, but you know Tesla was down four percent on the day. Amazon was down almost six percent. Microsoft down big. Apple down big. Google down big. Netflix down big. You know, just a lot of things that were down big, including obviously all those financials. So, of course, the market did bad when it has nothing there to support it. And, you know, we've been talking about this. If we look at year to date heat map, it gets even more of a clear picture that things are just getting completely hammered. And, you know, there's a lot more downside to potentially come in some of these uh, some of these names. So, for example, Apple's down 10 percent on the year. Right. But we'll look at just how far it's came and just how little it's fallen off. Microsoft is down almost 20 percent. Google down around 13. Amazon's down almost 20 percent. Tesla is down over 20 percent. Netflix down 41 percent. So some big moves down on the the mega cap stocks there now. If I pull up a chart of, for example, Tesla, and you look back to 2020, it hasn't came off that much, right? We're just seeing massive volatility. It broke this trend, and now we're starting to see some more resistance. But, you know, it just just think about it in terms of where we are right now year to date, but how far we came in a prior years. And there's just, there's just the potential for a lot more downside, which could put, obviously, a lot of pressure on the markets. Um, not to say that that's going to happen, but we need to be at least aware of what is taking place. Look at Microsoft, right? Microsoft, from this um, pre-pandemic high, was right around 190. And Microsoft is just now starting to see some cracks, right? So we broke down this trend line. If we start dating back from 2020, moving it up, now we're starting to see weakness. This to down here, that is a big, big fall for Microsoft. And Microsoft is obviously a huge mega cap stock that would put a lot of weight. This is the weekly time frame, right? A lot of things can change still. But as you can see, we are seeing some weakness out of the gates. Google, another big, big name that has been a, on a monster, monster run, especially if we look back to the pre-pandemic high. And the reason why I say pre-pandemic high is because there are stocks coming back down to their pre-pandemic high. So if this, right, is coming off a little bit this year, but if we start seeing it sell off more, imagine it coming back down to its pre-pandemic high. Wow, that would be insane. And the market would not like that. Same with Apple. Apple is one of the stronger ones. Now, from a weekly perspective, last week's candle was pretty bearish and we got below the low of that and we started seeing some further weakness. Haven't quite closed down the week, right, from this trend. But, you know, so far, not the greatest start. We'll see if we can bid it back up, but still way off from its pre-pandemic high too. Not saying that it's going to be coming down there, but even if it were to come down to say, you know, this cluster of candles down here, you know, that's still a big fall to around 135 from where it's at. One. All right, everybody, welcome back here. We're going to look at Bitcoin not looking all too hot, right? But it is still holding up within this trend line. This trend line is going to be an important one to watch, right? We had so many candles right here and so many candles right here. So there's a lot of data points, right? Right around this zone. And as you can see, we're holding right back up into that area. It hasn't broken yet, but be on the lookout for a daily close below it. So this candle, 
just recently closed, but we got bid right back up. So there's a possibility that we start bouncing from this area right back again, and we just keep continuing to put in lower highs, higher lows. And then that means it's what? It goes from expansion to contraction. It gets tighter. And then we see some sort of explosive move from that point. Not to you know predict that that's going to be coming up this way, but we got to be mindful for that. So we haven't had a daily close below the trend line yet. And if we do, I would expect that we could see further weakness to potentially go test this low, which is right at around 35,000. If we take a look at Ethereum, Ethereum did break down from this level and we're below all those key moving averages. We're below the relative strength line or the relative strength line, sorry, is putting in lower lows, lower highs, and we're below the 50 period uh, EMA too as well. So that's not a good sign. And we'll see here if we get some further weakness or if it comes back to back test, right? So the Bitcoin is the main one that I'm watching right now because it's still holding. So if Bitcoin starts bouncing, I could I could see Ethereum trying to come back up within here. And then maybe if we get some continued weakness, then it might do something like that where we go test this previous low and or this low right here in the price of Ethereum. Now, if we take a look at the sailor to shift ratio, we have had one false signal this year, one false signal the prior year. It currently stands on a sell signal, right? So we got to wait for that buy signal to trigger. I wait for the buy signal to trigger. You know, anybody can technically front run it or use the tool however they want to do. But the people that did front run the signal on the prior week after seeing that strong, strong daily move of 15%, clearly it got faded and now we're back to where we were. Okay, so we're far off from the signal flipping right now. When it does flip, then we have to look at the prior week and get above that. So we'll come to that when it comes there. But as it stands right now, the weekly candle does not look good. We have a new week that's forming, right? So if we start getting a weekly close below that 37,500 level, that can definitely spell out some more downside in the price of Bitcoin. We're just not there at this particular point in time. Let's hop into the indices and we're going to talk about the risk ranges and why I think that there might be some upside versus some downside, at least in the short term. All right, so let's take a look at the SPY. It was down almost 3% on the day. Big, huge move. Now, if you'd follow me on Twitter, right, I, we talked about this. I even posted on my part or two-part series that I did about something's going to break. And if you haven't watched that yet, I'd recommend you go watch it. But we are already day one, right? In day one with the week's pack of volatility, we're pretty much right there at the lower range, right at about 420. So this is could be a potential area of support as it's been support prior. Now, this is where I'm saying that there might be some potential more upside than there is downside. We're already here at the lower risk range. So when I think in terms of risk to reward, if you wanted to try to take a trade around this area because you think that this type of candle, think of a rubber band, right? Stretching, 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 which that was a very large range candle, right? And it's it could be extended to the point where people all of a sudden buy into it. So for example, if you want to see what that something might look like, take a look right here. So on this move down, this candle right there, big, strong move to the downside. And then all of a sudden we got this bounce. Right, So it could be a short-term potential bounce. Now, from a bullish perspective, what you'd want to see is a gap down and then come back up. So if it gaps down, you got to be careful coming outside of this range because more hedging takes place and it could force the price down even lower. Now, what am I looking at in terms of risk to reward? Well, the downside risk right here, so to, to back to this low, to where we are right now, even into the middle of this range, you're looking at, a lot more reward than there is risk. So that's what I mean by saying, you know, there might be, there is, you know, more potential for upside than downside. That is what that, what I'm talking about. So the risk to the downside is smaller as long as you obviously protect your capital and you, you know, get out of the position when you need to get out of the position to the upside. So for example, right, we have a lot of volatility in this market still. So it can go either way and it could extend further down. But if you were to take a shot down here, thinking that we might get back up to the middle of the range or potentially even higher, that is what I'm talking about from there could be some more, you know, the numbers to the upside outweigh the numbers to the possible downside here. And right, keep in mind, obviously, you can have one news headline come out and things can be shifted all around, but that's just my thought process. If we take a look at the 15 minute time frame, you can see it. We're already overextended to the downside on the 15 minute time frame. We just got hit, 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 right? So resistance held, boom, support broke. Resistance held, support broke. So just like it was just like this all, all day, boom, 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 all the way to the downside. And now we're basically at that lower range right there. We have three gaps above us. So, you know, at some point there's probably going to offer up some relief to move up higher. If you want to try to catch that, cool, but just keep in mind just the amount of just 
you know, volatility that's just been kind of packed within this channel here. There's been a lot of chop, a lot of trading back and forth. So be very mindful of that. If we take a look at the VIX on the 15 minute, 30 minute time frame, sorry, we now have one, two, three, four, five, six gaps beneath us, and we still have that one gap above us at 45. So there is a possibility that we go scream up there to, to come and close that gap, but just know that there are a lot of gaps beneath us, and these will probably eventually get filled at some point, which tells me that there could be some upside in the markets. But that doesn't mean that we're just going to come out of a bear market. It, it it means that we can just see some pretty strong rallies, and we just need to be very tactical as far as trading that. As it stands right now, what's interesting is where we closed on the VIX. I mean, we still haven't even you know reached high, as high as where we were on the 24th. And you know, when you take a look at the S&P 500, where we're at here on the 24th, there's still a lot, pretty large range, large move to go. While the VIX is still trading, I mean, pretty darn high, right? We closed at 36, almost 37 handle on the VIX. It was up 13, almost 14% in percentage basis terms. So higher highs, higher lows. The VIX is clearly trending. Volatility is trending. This is where you go and you start putting on trades and you get chopped up, right? Russell volatility, the VIX, right? So the S&P 500, this kind of mimics that, right? This goes up, S&P 500 goes down. And then you have things like the, the VXN, I think it is, which is um, NASDAQ volatility. All right, so let's go into the Qs now. So the Qs got hit even harder than the SPY, right? So Qs got hit very hard. Consumer discretion was down big. Technology was down big. Those were some big hits on the sector. You can see here, if we just wanted to enter in outside of the risk range a little bit, but have a stop beneath this candle, or maybe even wait for an undercut of the candle and then pick it up on the way to see if we get some sort of a bounce, understand that the risk, right? So potential risk to potential reward to snap back a little bit, right? That's why I'm saying that there could be some more, there's more upside potential than there is potential downside for this week, at least in the short term. As always, things could potentially change. Um, so the same thing goes with the Qs, as I stated with the S&P 500, except the Qs are right about there at that lower risk range. And you can see here too, um, more clear, right? Bam, we're pretty much darn near touching it and we're extended. So there could be some relief rally or a potential time we can cover some shorts. It takes one news headline, one thing to potentially rocket this thing up. I don't know what that one thing could potentially be, but just know that there's a lot of things that are overextended. And this is where breakdowns can also occur, but just know that there was already a large move day one, which is why I'm saying that we might be looking here for potential um, shot at taking a, a, a bounce opportunity. IWM still looks like it has a little bit more room. They held up um, a little bit better, obviously, than the other indices. This one was down two and a half percent. Still big on the day; it was uh, down big. We have this double bottom still hasn't been taken out, and still right at around the lower range there of its uh, risk range. And if we take a look at the 15-minute time frame, you can just see here it hasn't gone anywhere for quite some time since January earlier this year. It's just been packing in all of this volatility, just going back and forth, ping-ponging around. So as we come to the lower range, we might come right back up to the middle of the range, right? So that is why I'm saying the downside risk versus the potential move to the upside, you know, it makes for a good risk to reward trade. If you're willing to take that, you just need to make sure that you use your stop loss when necessary. All right, everybody, that's all I got for you on today's episode. Be mindful of the risk that is out there. Do not try to be a hero Why volatility is trending with higher highs and higher lows. It is a very difficult environment to be a swing trader in. If you want to take stabs intraday, awesome. You can give that a shot or you can do swing trading too. You know That's completely up to you. Just be mindful of the risks that are out there. Have a wonderful night.